We've been pretty annoyed with Keir Starmer of late that we have been encouraging people to stay in the Labour Party so you can vote in NEC elections and so the left can still have influence within the party. The Times, though, are reporting that not all of you are listening. Um, 250 people a day since Keir Starmer was elected last spring have been leaving their Labour Party. Yes, membership fell by just under 57,000 people or 10% between April and November. According to figures published by Labour, it had 552,835 members eligible to vote in its leadership election in April. That figure had fallen to 495,961 in the National Executive Committee elections two weeks later. Insiders believe that its real membership could be below 450,000 when lapsed members, those who had stopped paying their subscription, are taken into account. Aaron, this has been sort of shared as evidence that Keir Starmer is sort of losing the, you know, the dynamism that came with a movement party from at least you know, the first years of, of Jeremy Corbyn's leadership, 2017, for example. Mm. It worked pretty well. By 2019, obviously, everything had, had gone wrong. But it's hard to argue that a small party is better than, than a big party. At the same time, do you think this will just be music to Keir Starmer's ears? Because presumably, the people who have left the party are disproportionately those who, who support Jeremy Corbyn and who might be voting for different slates when it comes to things like the NEC election or even parliamentary selections. First of all, it's more than 50,000. I mean, it's at least 50,000. Um, and I think the paper is right there uh, in saying it's probably close to 100,000. Could be more. We know that because clearly just the turnout was so astronomically low for the most recent NEC elections. I think it's almost certainly more than 100,000 people have left. And you're right to say that most of those people, not all of them, we don't actually know, might not be as high as it potentially could be, but it seems primarily people from the left who could be the basis of a return to the, the sorts of policies we saw up until last year. Could it be music to his ears? I mean, Keir Starmer's getting so much wrong at the moment, and his supporters and allies are cheering on so many things which are leading to negative consequences. I think they'll try and dress it up as, yes, this is exactly what we want, right? We're, as we're going to see, we're polling below a Conservative Party and we're falling in the context of 6,000 deaths. His first six months of, as leader have been entirely nondescript. So I think they're going to say that. I think primarily, actually, the biggest problem for them with regards to the falling membership is also you're saying uh, a sort of salami slicing of union funds. We've talked about this before. And the big donors aren't coming yet. Now, they may well come, right? They may well come. But when you've got local elections to fight next May, it's a, it's a problem. So if Labour do poorly next May, if the members keep on going, if the unions keep on reducing funds to the party, you know, I think gave nine million to Labour in 2019, and those donors don't come, then all of a sudden he's in quite a weak situation. Now, I do think it's possible that in 12 months time, well, not even 12 months, in eight months time after May, if Labour do badly, or they underperform, by the way, I don't think they will, uh, but let's just say they do for the sake of argument. I think people will be saying Keir Starmer should consider his position. Now, I don't think that means the left should launch a leadership election for two reasons. First of all, it's not strong enough to do so. Secondly, I think it would be a perfectly fair criticism to say in response to that, he hasn't had time. You know, you can't say, well, Jeremy Corbyn wasn't given a shot by the time of the chicken coup. They did it within 12 months of him becoming leader and then doing the exact same thing, although it'd be 18 months. So I think it does create problems for Keir Starmer. And if the next six months are like the last six months, people will be calling for his head. But if he is replaced, and I suspect he wouldn't be, it would almost certainly be by somebody from the right of the party rather than the left. I disagree with that. I mean, I, I, well, well the, the right still don't have the membership who could win them a, a leadership election. So, I mean, I, I It'd think... be somebody in the pocket of the right. Your, your argument there, I think, it, it'd be the right who are most likely to successfully mount a challenge because they have the MPs. Mm. Um, the left still, you know, the, the socialist campaign group can't really... Um, get enough nominations for someone to challenge Keir Starmer from the left, but someone from the right potentially could. There's still a big a big base for the right in the party. But I don't think they're going to do that soon because it, if you think about it, the one thing that could be bringing Keir Starmer down in the polls is his sort of small C conservatism mm. and him attacking and dividing the left, which they love. So, so I mean, I think his, his position is safe. I don't know. Let me, let me clarify because it's important. I don't think the right want to get rid of Keir Starmer. What I'm saying is, in the scenario where Keir Starmer goes, for whatever reason, let's say there's a calamitous local election results next year, and they're running out of money really quickly, all I'm saying is, were he to be replaced by somebody, it would not be somebody by the, from the left. It might be Angela Rayner. 
in which case the left all of a sudden would have to back somebody who, you know, we saw the fallout when she was backed by Momentum, for instance, Deputy Leader last year. I think Angela Ren is a very compelling politician. Uh, but in any case, she wouldn't necessarily, in a policy respect, be to the left significantly of Keir Starmer. She wouldn't be doing a lot of the crap he's doing right now. But, you know, on Green New Deal, on, on housing, would she be to the left of Keir Starmer? We, we don't really know. Probably not, actually. So that's all I want to say. I think it's possible for Keir Starmer to be weakened, to be doing terribly, and for that not to redound to the benefit of the left of the party anytime soon. Let's go on to another story which is apparently damaging Keir Starmer, according to people close to him. Um, this is from The Observer. They're reporting that party insiders believe the Ford inquiry could be a major flashpoint damaging Starmer's leadership. So the Ford inquiry, um, for anyone who, who, who hasn't got that stored in their mind, was launched to investigate the leaked dossier on Labour anti-Semitism and factionalism. Um, so this was put together and while Jeremy Corbyn was still leader under Jenny Formby as general secretary, and it was meant to be a um, submission to the EHRC to sort of show how factionalism had contributed to um, the, the poor handling of, of complaints of anti-Semitism within the Labour Party, because the EHRC was sort of looking at this as the party is one coherent institution who we can find guilty or innocent, and they're saying, look, wait a minute, you have to take into account there was a civil war going on, um, we tried, they mucked it, whatever. Um, that ended up getting leaked because lawyers didn't want to hand it to the EHRC. The Ford inquiry is an inquiry into both its contents and the situation in which it was compiled and the situation in which it was leaked. Um, the Observer are reporting that concerns have now emerged over the scale and unpredictability of the independent inquiry, which inside sphere has taken on a life of its own. It is understood to have received hundreds of submissions. Party figures said the inquiry was going anywhere and everywhere. Another said, we have created a real millstone here. This could be sorted out, frankly, in a few weeks. But the inquiry seems to be looking at everything. It's become a nightmare. Now... I want to get your thoughts on this, Aaron, because there's a couple of options here. So, so one is that sort of Keir Starmer <laughs> launched this thinking, oh, I'll just start a review and that will put the issue to bed and I can kind of get them to sort of put forward what, what basically what I want. So a possible outcome is that this is actually running out of his control um, and that he's sort of adopted or hired some people or appointed, sorry is the word, who are more independent than he was hoping and are going to sort of tell fundamentally the truth um, about what happened. And so they're briefing beforehand to, I suppose, try and potentially dismiss the results, but also to sort of uh, kite fly a bit to sort of say, maybe you should, maybe you should tone it down a bit to whoever is doing this report. The other option, though, um, is that what they're trying to do is set expectations quite high for this report. So mm. if you're here with the HRC report, for example, I was on the radio with Margaret Hodge on Saturday. Incredibly rude person. Very, very unpleasant. Mm. <laughs> just not a nice, just not a nice person. Nice. Just, just, just seemed very, very unpleasant. Anyway, she was saying, and her line has constantly been since the HRC report, she's saying, oh, it's so much worse than I could have possibly imagined. It's, I read it and I was just thinking, this is so strong. This is so much stronger than anything I could have imagined. And you just stop listening to that thing like, one, what were you expecting? And two, what report did you read? Because I mean, if, if you read the report, even though everyone said the damning report, and yeah, it's not, it's not a report that says, yeah, the Labour Party did great, but the details of it basically are, it had a defunct complaints system, which basically everyone's admitted over the past five years, and they say it improved under Jenny Formby. Um, and well, they, they have two examples of people on Twitter dismissing claims of anti-Semitism to the extent that they think um, is an abuse because it sort of encourages an atmosphere where Jews aren't, aren't welcome. That was people basically saying, you know, this is all factional. This is all um, invented by the Israel lobby. Um, so I don't know how good she was expecting it to be for her to find this completely damning. Um, but I find it a bit of a ridiculous argument really and I'm wondering if that's what's happening here the Labour Party are sort of ramping this up as an independent investigation that they think is going to be really problematic for Keir to sort of make it sound independent and then when it comes out and it's actually a bit of a whitewash they can say oh well we've been saying that this is going to be really damaging for Keir because it was so independent and then it gets released and they're like and and look mm. it, this was supposed to be a real problem for Keir Starmer and actually it's totally backing him <laughs> mm. actually it turns out this 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 report which was supposed to be so Difficult and running wild and independent. It must be correct because we were worried about it. And what it has shown is Keir Starmer's great. Jeremy Corbyn's terrible and everyone on the left should be purged. I think that, that may be true. I think that would be, <laughs> that would be very smart expect, uh, sort of um, expectations management. However, 
what, what, what came through in that article in The Observer was this idea that it's mushrooming. And, and that, I think, is probably true. Because what Keir Starmer did to sort of defang the political contents of that report was to say, we want to look at the contents of that report, how it was leaked, and who it was leaked by. So it was really expanded. Rather than say, let's talk about what's in this report. It's not acceptable. He tried to actually make its purview much broader to make it less politically toxic for him. And it, it may be that that has political consequences for him. And it may be that actually it's a very big report. And the, big, the bigger it is, the worse it is. You know, the HRC report, the media can represent it how they like. The HRC report basically had three very critical things to say about Labour. You know, how it acted unlawfully with regards to political intervention, with regards to specific complaints, um, the behaviour of certain agents of the party, and its complaints process, right? That's, that's it. In 10 seconds, I've explained the HRC report and how it's negative. This may be much, much broader. And so I, I think there's probably some truth to it. However, I don't think it's going to be, it, it should be investigating. What was Operation Cupcake? It's alluded to in the leaked document. What MPs were involved? What party grandees were involved? What was Operation what, Cupcake? Operation Cupcake was the idea that you have in the senior management team WhatsApp group within months of Corbyn winning is basically a, an organised effort to get rid of him. That's what's called Operation Cupcake. Uh, yeah. You know, cl clearly there's a term being used by senior me members of staff referring to a coordinated effort to get rid of the elected leader, and it had a name. That should, cl I think that should have its own investigation. Uh, and Starmer hasn't done that. So I'm inclined to agree with you. I, I, I don't really expect anything from the Ford inquiry. However, its timing is bad for Starmer. He's got poor polling results. Members are leaving. Uh, you've had, obviously, the whole Farago following Jeremy Corbyn being suspended. Five weeks ago, Starmer's personal approval ratings were very good. Labour, that week that uh, Corbyn was suspended, were five points ahead of the Tories in one opinion poll, primarily because of Marcus Rashford. Yes, it's not dreadful for Labour yet, but it's very bad. Things have turned around remarkably quickly for Labour. It's been very bad. The next month is like the last month. Again, that is not the context you want the Ford inquiry to be releasing its results. It's, it's findings, rather. We have got some of these polls up because some of you might be thinking, oh, you're saying Keir Starmer's doing really bad in the polls. He's doing much better than what Jeremy Corbyn was in the tail end of his leadership. That's true. Um, but when you look at directions, and especially directions immediately since um, the Jeremy Corbyn controversy with him being readmitted and then having the whip suspended, um, they're going in the wrong direction for Labour. So this was a poll released by YouGov today. Um, Westminster voting intention, the Conservatives on 38, Labour on 37, and that's Labour down three points in a week. What it looks like is those, that 3% of voters are going to the Lib Dems and the Greens. So that could quite easily be people who were sort of offended by Keir Starmer's treatment of, of Jeremy Corbyn, basically in putting up two fingers to the left and um, switching allegiance. Again, these are small numbers, but it's a, it's a signal. Also, if you click that document there on the Britain Alex Twitter, um, on that tweet, it basically shows the number of Tory voters from 2019 switching to Labour. I, th I think it's it's like it's five and a hundred. It's tiny, and then you've got I think two and a hundred are switching Labour to the Tories. Well, who the hell are these people? But in any case, after sixty thousand deaths, the number of Tory Labour switches, which we, we we were told Starmer would really get these people, is tiny. It's within the margin of error of zero. So Labour is still behind the Tories, despite the fact the Lib Dems are five percent lower than they were. Bear in mind they got twelve percent in December twenty nineteen. Let's look at the opinion poll. So this was out yesterday. So this is changes from the 2nd of November. The Conservatives are on 41%. That's up free Labour on 38%. That's down four. Um, the Lib Dems down one and the Greens up one. So again, you're seeing over the same period of time, Labour down four points, very similar to the YouGov poll. That support going to different parties compared to the, to the YouGov poll. But anyway, just giving you quite a clear picture and we can go back to YouGov because this sort of broke it down as to why this is happening um, and it does seem to be changing attitudes towards Keir Starmer sorry this is actually from opinion Boris Johnson is up one again over the past couple of weeks Keir Starmer still as I say he's in positive territory he's plus 11 so I don't think it I don't think we can say you know in terms of polling it's been a disastrous six months for him but it does seem like it's been a disastrous 
two weeks for him. And what has happened in those two weeks, he suspended the whip from Jeremy Corbyn, stood up on, on television and said, the guy who I asked to be prime minister last year is actually a terrible person. He needs to apologize. 60,000 people have died and he's up there saying, this person needs to delete their, their Facebook post and wholeheartedly apologize. I'm not surprised people see this guy as shifty and kind of not interested in the things they're interested in. You can get a pretty decent swing away from Labour just with people who really like Jeremy Corbyn. I mean, what sort of centrist will always say is, ah, oh, Jer you know, Jeremy Corbyn wasn't that popular in the country. And by the end of his leadership, he wasn't. But there are 10 to 20% of the population who are really committed to Jeremy Corbyn and don't really take kindly to a leader of what's supposed to be a progressive party putting two fingers up at him. So if Keir Starmer wants to make it the, the defining issue of his, his leadership, whether or not you have respect for Jeremy Corbyn and want him to be humiliated, which is essentially what Keir Starmer seems to be trying to do, then that doesn't seem to me to be a wise electoral strategy. Um, our final poll for you, this is from Opinion again, which of the following people do you think would be the best Prime Minister? Again, almost neck and neck, 31-30 within the margin of error, but Keir Starmer down three points um, since when that poll was last done. So the direction is all the same. This row about Jeremy Corbyn not benefiting Keir Starmer, maybe he should have done the sensible thing, which is to say, I may disagree with what he said, but obviously this isn't a disciplinary matter. We would not be talking about this still. This, this crisis is one of Keir Starmer's own making. If he had said when Jeremy Corbyn made that statement, I don't agree with the statement, but he's not in my shadow cabinet, so there's not much I can do. This isn't a disciplinary matter. Then we would not be here. Labour would probably be up in the polls, right, given the, the past two weeks that the Conservatives have had. I do think, Michael, I mean, we probably, we probably do disagree about this. Somebody coming in, former Director of Public Prosecutions, £700,000 campaign from the most expensive leadership campaign in the history of British politics, I think his first six months have been incredibly underwhelming in that context. He is not Tony Blair Mark II. That is, that is not what he is. That, is. that is not what his leadership is going to look like. Could Labour form the next government? Perhaps. Who knows? But it, it's, it's not going to be easy. And I think a lot of people backing Starmer thought this was going to be right. Keir Starmer's at the wheel. You know, Labour, 10 Downing Street, 2024, here we come. It's not going to be like that. And the last month in particular has been marked by unnecessary self-defeating measures like suspending Jeremy Corbyn. I think we can get a couple more polls up. We can get up the one that you were talking about. Do you think Labour is divided? That rockets um, the moment that Jeremy Corbyn is suspended from the party, which basically provokes a civil war um, and will continue to do so, so long as he is not fully reinstated and, you know, in the sense of, of getting the, the Labour whip back, that will remain um, like that. And people don't want to vote for divided parties. My, my theory about this, people say people don't vote for divided parties. Now, you ask people, people don't really care if a party is divided or not. So Boris Johnson kicking out 20 of his MPs they didn't really care about. I think more what they care about is people talking about their own party. So the division, if you're, you're super cutthroat and just kick them out, um, especially if it's people like Amber Rudd who you know don't really have a following, I think if you just will kick out Jeremy Corbyn, probably you would have the, the danger that there are a lot more people committed to him than they're committed to Amber Rudd. I'm using her as an example because the whip was withdrawn from her by, Jer by Boris Johnson and it didn't seem to have much, much effect. But I think what really damages you in the polls is that you know, there's a national crisis going on and all you're talking about is whether or not someone in your own party can have the whip for, because of something they said on Facebook. That, that's, that's what people don't like. Um, it's the, the sort of the navel gazing of it all. And um, we can also get up approval of Keir Starmer over time. So as I said, I, I don't really think his, we can say his year has been disastrous because opposition leaders... I didn't say disastrous. I think he's had a Opposition bad year. leaders don't often get in, in positives. 60,000 you know, people have died. In positive, yeah. But it, you, can, you can see a direction of travel there, which is that disapproval is rising. No, I, I want to make clear, I don't, I don't think he's had an appalling year. I don't think he's had a year from hell. I think expectations were high. That's obviously, nobody ever wants those, actually. Generally, they're a bad thing. Uh, but I do think he's had an underwhelming year. And I think if the next six months are underwhelming, if they have a bad set of local elections in May, I, I do think people will start to ask questions. That doesn't mean he'll go. Uh, people turn things around all the time. But for me... Starmer's approach here is basically what Osborne and Cameron try and do after 2005, which is to say you have a successful government, we're going to basically do everything you do, and that will make us look like a credible government in waiting. The point is, Blair and Brown were actually effective politicians. And right now, Starmer and Labour are mirroring a party which is in complete disarray and completely unable to manage both Brexit and COVID. So it feels like they're going to have to come up with a new strategy quite soon. Otherwise, this could start to look quite bad. And I agree with you. I'm being critical because I'm a critic. Uh, but it's, it, it, I think many, many people would have expected him to be doing better.